Wigan. Wigan watch. 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 Hello, welcome to Wigan watch. It's a bit of a special today. Why is it special? Because I'm not on my own. I've got these two reprobates with me. Excuse me. Do you want to go on Wigan watch? Hi guys. Hi. Who are they? Hi, I'm Luke Marsden, big fan of Wig and Watch, and that is why I basically asked Tony, could I come on this uh, episode? Uh, you might know me from 2008 when I was the first ever Wiganer and the only Wiganer to go in the Big Brother house. And now uh, I write a weekly column for the Wigan Post. I'm a passionate Wiganer and I want to find out what's happening. Hi, I'm Peter Barnes. I'm a passionate Wiganer. Great to be on Wig and Watch today. Just out visiting, see what's going on in my old hometown. So then we've got uh, Peter and Luke, and uh, Peter's not been in Wigan for how long? Oh, it'd be about three years now, definitely like pre-Covid, must be. Like, to actually be in the town centre at least. Obviously living in Oral, you come back to see your parents, but I'm actually wandering around now, the town is very different from what I left it in. <laughs> and you haven't seen the main part of it yet, No, I've you? not, no. I, like I said, it's been a good couple of years before I've actually been out and about around the town centre, but yeah. So Peter, but do you recognise the vision from Wigan? Because what we're looking at here, for example, you could forget your London yeah. life, come back up into Wigan when this is built and take a place in this residential block. Well, yeah, it's, I don't think, you'd, like you said before, Luke, who's really going to live here? Who's really, what kind of people are really moving to the area? Um, How is actually, this going to be occupied? Who is going to decide they don't want to live in Manchester City Centre, it's too expensive, I'm going to go and live in Wigan instead, What? and then rely on public transport to then get them back into Manchester? Yeah. I just don't see it. And also, as, as Tony pointed out, these are now office. This looks like offices there. Oh, that's a good idea for 1990. We're all working at yeah. home. Yeah, yeah, no, you're perfectly right. Most of these, like you say, these uh, kind of commercial blocks will stay empty for a long time. And I imagine most of the flats will stay empty for a long time. You know, is Wigan really pulling people in? It's not just people that want to don't yeah. live in Manchester anymore. Are people moving to the area? Most of the statistics show people are moving out of yeah. Wigan because there's not there's nothing here. You know, there's very little economic activity. There's no new businesses coming up. And you know, what's the point of being here? And really? this isn't dragging people back. It's not enough of a hook. No. I mean, this here's the crux of it. Who? In the right mind is going to come to this hotel it's not as if we haven't got the old converted prison uh, uh jail cell that's been converted into a premier inn yeah. so a premier inn within what a three minute walk of where this would be yeah that's what we need another hotel to compete with already the two or three hotels we've already got well the other hotels they all have free parking as well which i pointed out on numerous occasions whereas where's the parking for that and will it be free Scrap the hotel. We well, do not need a hotel. No, I have to admit, the, I, don't, I don't really see why there's another hotel. I, I, on the way in, we drove past the, on the Holiday Inn Express. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah. I, I generally had no, I had no idea it was there. So that opened, what, three, four years ago, yeah. yeah. pre-COVID? So we got a Holiday Inn Express, we got the Premier Inn, which is relatively quite new, the old uh, jail cell from the courts. And now, of course, we've got this luxury um, three-star three uh, hotel. It's yeah. just... I, I do not understand the rationale of needing this hotel. Well, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, really, and it's public transport links. Yeah. So I presume the idea that the council have got is people will stay here and they'll go out in Manchester. Yeah. But what's the point when the last train is what twenty past eleven? Yeah, yeah. 11? And that's if it's not cancelled. And that's if it's not cancelled. <laughs> you know, there's no like having all this stuff is lovely, but it needs the connections and the interlinks to do it. And from any of these plans I see, none of that is mentioned, and that's the real crux of why most of this stuff just won't work. Yeah. One of the weird things I've been doing recently is I've been doing the, uh, you can get a bus ticket all day, bus ticket, any bus I think it's called, for a fiver, and you can go anywhere you want. And what I've done is I've gone to Manchester a couple of times, yeah. and uh, it's, well, from my house, it's three buses. There's no direct bus from Wigan to Manchester at all. So you have to get three buses just to get to Manchester? Yeah. If I, if I, for a fiver? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> how I mean, is that even yeah. environmentally friendly yeah. to yeah, even be doing that? It's better than a car and it's cheaper. Well, yeah. yes, but you can fair. just hop on the train and for what, yeah. what, I don't know what the return ticket is, I think it's about £10 now to Manchester, but at least it's direct-ish. If it turns up. Well, yeah. and then if it turns up. I mean, you could end up in Wigan, uh, in Manchester, and not be able to get back. Tony, yeah. you don't need to be going to Manchester. Because oh, yeah. soon enough, we're going to have a hotel. And on top of that, we're going to have, there's a per, the new pavilion area, I believe, down here. Yep. So this is the grand scheme at plan. So we don't need to be heading into Manchester when we've got this giant concrete slab of walking space. Yeah, because that's what we're going to need. More walking space. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I think the square is a good idea. But I don't think the square with uh, a, a cube on it is necessarily a good idea. 
That is going to be a multi-storey type food establishment. Oh, right. Um, like the pipe works and, and various yeah, that places kind of My yeah. question is, does this really feel like Wigan? Yeah. Well, it's, you, it's not really got its like historic kind of roots and all, you know, all the original uh, buildings and things. Yeah, it's set in the background. That's, you've got the Queen's Hotel the problem, and Makerson's Arcade yeah. in their defence. Yeah. They haven't knocked them down. But, you know, if, like I said, if you look at all those apartment blocks and like all this new stuff, it's all kind of soulless and you know there's nothing really that feels like it's wigging you can walk into any town and it would look like that this feels yeah. like a tone center simulation i have built on the sims yeah exactly that's that genuinely yeah. that is how i think feels. you're bang on there i, I think, think you're it, really right it feels like the spirit of wigan is being decimated here and i don't believe this is going to rebuild it no well i i said and i've said a few times is what it felt like it felt like a it feels like a copy and paste it's like oh it worked in you know, somewhere down south. Insert city centre. Um, yeah. So we'll do what they did. Yeah. But if we're looking at stuff that happened a long while ago, like five, six, ten years ago, it would have worked then. But the problem you've got is uh, society's changed, COVID has changed a hell of a lot, so we don't have the need for people to live where they work. They can actually work where they live. Yeah. You don't even and, need to be in the same country no. anymore now. And then you've got over here, you've got the uh, multimedia city which is, I think, Paul's claim by the looks of things. <laughs> um, now, this is going to be a cinema, a bowling alley, uh, an indoor golf course, what and like, um, something else. What I like about that is these are truly original ideas because what we've not got in Wigan within walking distance of this exact site is a, is a bowling alley. Yeah. What we've not got at Robin Park is a cinema. What we've not got on a 10-minute bus journey up to Bolton and Middlebrook or 15 minutes is, is a cinema. We, we do not need these yeah. elements here. And also, how much is this going to cost? A family of four cannot afford a day out as it is. What are they going to do when these prices come in? Yeah, 100%. Well, the th the um, thing sorry, just one really quick point. Again, I, you pointed out earlier, where's the parking? Yeah, exactly, that's my argument. Like, you, you, you <laughs> can't got, see anything yeah. on this block. You've got increased parking, which is what most towns actually need now. Where am I putting my electric car? Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not a Tesla, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to add. It's not a Tesla, it's a, it's a Vauxhall Corsa. <laughs> But no, I mean, my argument is exactly that. Um, you come out of here, which is Standish Gate, with your kids at, say, 7 o'clock at night, having watched the latest Disney movie. It's dark because it's winter. You're on Standish Gate at 7 o'clock at night. Where's your car? Yeah. And you've got to walk to your car with the kids. Whereas, like you said, down at Robin Park, you've got the car park yeah. literally and there parking for the yeah. and it's free yeah and yeah. it's free and and you can stay there all day and also there's other areas that you can visit you can go to the bingo you can go and watch the Wigan Warriors and Wigan yeah. Athletic play uh, and I just think this here isn't actually ironically conducive to getting families into the town centre and I believe that is the point this has all yeah. the feeling of somebody who's come in to redesign the town that doesn't understand the town and doesn't has probably never town. even lived here yeah. It just feels really corporate, yeah. really dry. There's yeah. no no soul to it, 100%. and I, it just it's a nice idea, but I just don't see it working in the way that the council seem to think that it will. <laughs> well, the thing is, the council have said it was uh, a couple of years ago. It's going to cost 130 million to build this, and it's still costing 130 million. But what can you so, buy uh, at the same price yeah. that you could buy? Yeah. A couple of years Literally ago. nothing. Yeah. Literally nothing. It's so a, it's not going to cost 130 yeah. million, also, is it? Yeah, oh God, it's, it's a, so, as a uh, public works thing, it's never going to cost yeah. the amount yeah, of money yeah, that yeah. it no. says it will. It's never going to do that. But also, can we not find 130 million quid to spend on something else? Do you know to actually help people in the town yeah. right now? Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that could use that help. Uh, you know, and, and these things are all lovely in long term investments. But, but who is this? Got a lot of problems now. This isn't going to fix, no. I don't believe, any of the current ones no. we just said. But I think we should take a look round. Yeah, I should. But just before we go, um, the suggestion I had is the pavilion and the hotel. Forget them. Two reasons. One is we don't need them and to save money. So they can still build the apartments and everything at this end and get the market open. Forget the multimedia centre and instead. Have a, a nice little walkway here to Standish Gate that's open. Uh, little shops and maybe, I don't know, micro pubs or whatever on the way in. You can have outdoor seating in the summertime. And then here is a much bigger square that we can do celebrations of, you know, winning the cup, uh, pride, anything like that. A Christmas tree, we can have a Christmas, Christmas tree. Christmas light switch on. Yeah, Christmas light switch on. <laughs> I have retired from doing that though. Uh, seven years in a row was too much. I'll hand it over to Hacker T Dog and maybe you in future. I don't think, don't think we can cancel like me. Anyway, let's have a walk around. Wow. So welcome to the Berlin Wall, or rather the Wigan Wall. <laughs> the Wigan Wall. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, it's President Trump built this. <laughs> yeah. He wants it, apparently. If he becomes president again, he wants to uh, claim it back. Well, this has been more, this has been more cost, I imagine, than the one yeah, probably, yeah, of, of, of Mexico. I mean, but yeah, I mean, there used to be the toilets here and everything, and a uh, three or four storey building, and it's all gone. So if I, if it's I need to be a car park. Now, do I have to go in back into the market? Yeah, to the uh, entrance uh, near the college. On the old, totally on the other side of yeah. the market. The yeah, yeah, right. totally, yeah. You'll probably know this. How? How long do they ex expect this project to take like, uh, um, to actually get it up and running? They've said the market should relocate to the new market in uh, 2024 um, and the rest of it should be done within a couple of years after that. Oh, right. So okay. if you're a market trader at the moment, what are you doing to stay alive? Because yeah. we just walked around the market now on a Saturday, prime day, I imagine, for market day, and there was maybe less than 30 people yeah. in. Yeah, that's one of the issues that they've got. I've, I've, done, I've spoke a lot to market traders, and um, you know they're less than impressed what's going on. The, the obvious idea would have been, and again, this is common sense, uh, to have the market built before they started yeah. all this lot, yeah. and then they could kick us all out and straight and into a new premises, and then board all this off, and then you know you wouldn't have to walk half a mile to get a quarter of. Ham, not that I think you can anymore now because uh, well, there's no meat uh, butchers anymore in the market. No, is there? Well, there no, there's a butchers, I think. Yeah, yeah. one but, or two, and not eat. And also, but Redmond's has gone, and they've been there over hundred years now. Yeah, they're, right. they're now obviously involved in some sort of weird escape room when you have to leave the market to get out into the town centre. And we're, we're only on this side of it here. We're not even into the into the town yeah. centre of it. And also, the point is. If you're a market trader, how are we attracting people from the top of Wigan all the way down here navigating this maze? Yeah, I yeah. think that's a really good point. There's so many people still relying on working in the market. And they, it just seems to be that the council have just said, oh, well, you're just going to have to put up with it. For another year, for another 18 year. months? Yeah, and is that on track? Longer. Well, we'll, we'll go and have a look and see where they're up to Let's... in the new market. This just feels like a completely different place. And I know obviously it's a I construction mean... site right now, but we've literally just walked around the corner from the market hall. And I'm like, where's this shop gone? Where's that trader gone? But the, it doesn't feel like Wigan anymore. It's, it's infuriating. The galleries was 40 years old, give or take. Why is this happening? Why, why is there a need to rip down literally a perfect... That is in a better state than my house. So <laughs> why are we ripping it down? Yeah. Just well, repurpose it, go to the internal. But well, are you saying that's not structurally solid? The reality is, it's because the council or whoever hasn't done anything in such a long time, they now have to do something 10 times more dramatic because they failed to invest in the town again and again and again. And we see it's not just Wigan that's got this problem, it's right across the country. The local government has failed local towns. And, and this, is, this is what happens. And whether that yeah. be Labour or, or Conservative councils, yeah. there, there is it's mass mismanagement yeah. for tomorrow, but, but no more so, I believe, than in, in, in Wigan. I, I, genuinely, I'm, I'm so angry looking at the state of what we're doing here. Because is that is the clock tower coming down? To yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, let's rip that down, yeah. Oh, one the, of the most iconic bits of Wigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bulldoze it. Bulldoze what it. they're doing is um, the clock tower is remaining for the time being because it's attached to the market hall. So, um, well, from a structural yeah. point of view, they can't take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So they're um, that's staying for the time being, yeah. but obviously it will come down, and that'll be where the apartments are going. Um, and they're eight stories high. We forgot to mention that. Eight stories. What? And yeah, eight stories high. And uh, New York skyline <laughs> in Wigan. There's 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 um, I think 400 and odd apartments yeah. with suggested parking of um, 200 ish. Oh. So basically, right, so minus one car per uh, for every yeah. every four, family of four yeah. that is in there. Yeah, but I don't think they're expecting families of four. I think they're expecting you know like uh, young uh, workers, like and, young professionals. Yeah, that oh, yeah. kind of no, thing. Not, not you. <laughs> no, no, no we're, we're yeah, out of that group. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're not in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I mean, if you look, if you come over here, we're towing that down. You come over here and have a look through the fence. You can actually see. Be aware that crane is there. Uh, that's where my shop used to be, behind there. It's still there at the moment. Is your sign still on? No, no, they've ripped that it's off. Gone. Yeah, yeah. They've ripped that off. Uh, you can't see because of no, the... This blue mesh. Blue mesh. Probably don't want people in. to look at the there you go. total destruction. So, yeah, that bit there. And I think that might be staying because I think, again, it's attached to the market. So I think that is staying up for the time being, but I don't know. So we're now on Standish Gate and um, it's Saturday morning, late morning and uh, it's not too bad I suppose. 
Um, Luke, yeah. What? Yeah, the old M&S. Obviously, um, tragic to see it now. I don't know what it is, but my grandma, honestly, she'd be turning in her grave knowing she used to come every day as a lot of pensioners and Wigan relied on it. It was a bit of a treat for them to come to M&S. Yeah. And she would be absolutely heartbroken to see that that is totally gone now and turned into a, what is it, an art centre? It's, uh, it's, it's not exactly anything at the minute, I don't think. Um, again... I don't think necessarily it was the council's fault that that happened. No, 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 no. That's no. just that changing was high, high street behaviour. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, no, nobody's blaming the council for that. But of course, it could look better than two giant black boarded up yeah. Yeah. planks of wood. Like, I didn't even know it was an art centre. I just presumed it was all boarded up and, sh and shut down. No, if you go inside, sometimes they do have little exhibitions on the upper floor. Um, I'm not, I think I've been in once to have a look. Yeah. Um, but more often than not, it's just a case of... Uh, shut up um, yeah. you know. but the big question is Tony you know the size of the space we're looking at with mm. M&S so how do you fill a space that big with what the, the thing you've got is we've, we've also got WH Smiths and we've also got um, uh, Debenhams yeah, all the top there, yeah. and um, they're massive units and the problem you've got is the majority of um, big retail stores that are still going are either already here like Primark down yeah. the bottom of the road they're not going to move because you know people go there anyway, and yeah. you know it's always Captive queues. Audience, yeah, exactly. Is. So you know they'll they'll be happy down there. They're not going to relocate, and then who else is going to move to Wigan uh, as a, a new business yeah. uh, that's that size? I mean, we're not going to get you know the uh, Selfridges or anything like that. That's <laughs> no, never going to happen. So the only way I could think of doing anything with them is to divide them up into smaller units. And become bespoke units, like micro units, or you know yeah. your individual yeah. shops. Which, yeah. But yeah. then of course it comes back to the cost of rent. Yeah, well, yeah. that that would Which make is it less. Which then council can step in and actually yeah. do something to help on that on that on that end of things. Like you said, uh, retail trends are all changing. Footfalls always dying on high streets. That, that's something that the council just can't magically turn around. Yeah. But what they can do is encourage, you know, upstart incoming businesses. You can do they can do something to help because it's. I'm just looking down the road here, and all of that looks shut up down there. So you're going up towards Wigan Lane and everything. I'm like, what are what are they doing to to just attract business? Like I said, it doesn't have to be these massive companies there's enough people i think that would love a shot at having a retail space you know and i'm willing to try willing it for a discounted way yeah you know? and that's what the council should be doing are they reaching out to smaller businesses saying you can always band together get three companies in one building you know there's yeah. things you can do like and it just seems to me that the council's just sat on the hand saying oh well it's just declining footfall i'm like that's just not an excuse Tony, you are a prime example. How much engagement did you have? Were you encouraged to take a, a bigger unit within some of these open spaces? Were you encouraged to come literally get into the heart of the town centre with a new shop? To be honest with you, I've had one phone call and one email recommending a unit from the council. And this was months after I'd been kicked out. Uh, the unit they recommended, I'd already looked at and discounted because there was no electricity meter in there and it cost a fortune to put one in. And it has a step, and a lot of my customers are um, more... Um, yeah, they need better disability access yeah, yeah, and various yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah, so steps is not a thing for me. Plus, I never liked the group either. But, um... The <laughs> you, you can cut that bit out. I know, yeah. <laughs> but the thing that gets me is the private landlords. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I looked around like I said, down the bottom there, and the units down there, they wanted 25 grand a year for. What? What? And I'm like, it's... How much stuff do you need to sell to even just pay the rent? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the business rates on top of that because obviously we've had business rates relief because of COVID and whatever. Don't know what's going to come in the, um, in the um, a budget, budget next week, uh, whether there's going to be more business rate relief. There should be because a lot of businesses are struggling. And my, uh, what I've said is, what they should do is, they should put... Um, business rates down on any business that's less than say 10,000 square feet yeah. to zero and then any business that's in like a massive warehouse that's doing distribution like Amazon <laughs> um, they should get a, a higher yeah. Yeah. business rates because you know they're doing the turnover that we can't do I, th I think that's a really good way of looking at it, actually and I think that would, wouldn't just help Wigan I think that would help a lot of smaller towns uh, like you know you can still have the big companies coming in but you're not you're not pricing out uh, smaller traders like twenty five thousand pounds for just in rent alone. This is most, most places, most places can't even afford the rent, let alone actually turn a profit. So many towns on. are literally on life support, yeah. and we need some defibs, and we need them quickly, and we need some ideas, and we're not seeing any of it. No, I mean the another thing I do is uh, when I'm on my videos, I do lots of different things. <laughs> One of the things I've been doing recently has been a 
walk around different towns and cities and villages and whatnot. And I'm, I'll go in there and I take the mickey out of them. Uh, you know, like if I was in Wigan, I'd, I'd mention pies and all that kind of stuff. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but what I do is I look what's going on. And there's a few towns that are really, really, really um, not doing well. Of course not. Um, and I'm talking like Rotherham. I'm talking yeah, yeah, uh, Grimsby. Yeah. Um, I'm talking. Uh, so working class towns, you can see yeah. the pattern here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Northern working class Northern towns. Northern working class towns, you can you can see the pattern here. And you know it's very easy for for a lot of people to c continuously blame the government and actually even blame the councils. But actually, and I think it goes back to something that you've said previously, Peter, on some of the things you've been involved in, and, and even you, Tony. There was a significant lack of personal accountability for a lot of things, or accountability in general. And I think there's got to be some guys who got this wrong. We're trying our best from the council here. And I actually don't believe they, they, they think that there's an arrogance about it. And I think it's an arrogance that Wiganers are getting sick of. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like, you know, how many projects have, have Wigan tried in the past and yet we never hear about anybody getting fired? Yeah. You know, how much money is wasted on little, silly little projects that don't go anywhere and there's absolutely no accountability to it? And w what keeps increasing? The council tax. Yeah. Yeah, they, they increased it by 4.99%, so they didn't go for the full 5%. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, no. right. Well, let's have some coffees. Oh, we yeah. can't. We can't afford that. But, yeah, I mean, my, my argument in the... Uh, I think I wrote I write in the Observer, and um, I wrote in the Observer... Weekly? Weekly, yeah. Uh, I wrote, wrote in the Observer, um, you know, that, that zero... 0.01% uh, is going to go a long way for us lot. Yeah. What's you know? that, 82 PO month? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, that's Standish Gate. Yeah, I'm not. Mega Sis Arcade has always had, like, lots of different kind of shops down here. You know, it's not really your, your like, your high street ones, but it's nice to see, like, most of the... Uh, a unit seem occupied. Huge you know? resiliency yeah, in Dickinson's Arcade because I think you, it's very easy. You only have to see it's easy to walk down. Yeah. You can't get lost in Dickinson's You are so much for it, like you're kind of trapped in it. You're in trapped way, in it. You're you? also, you know, like businesses such as uh, Funky Vegas, you know, they are creating a need for people to come into yeah. the town centre. They're selling something niche different, you know. You've got, you've got, um, this you don't see baby shops anymore you know no. mother and baby that's all that's gone those type of shops so they're creating a need for people to come into the town centre yeah. you know you've got beauty stops warehouses yeah. You know, health right, Peter, if oh, you're going in here to pick up some chocolates. <laughs> get your nuts, get your nuts. Yeah. But even but, big um, brands like Tony and Guy, Tony and Guy is, of course, a, a national chain. Yeah. It's nice to good to see the national chains are still here. This is a new shop Christmas. as well, Bright Moon Crystals. Oh, well, 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 well. Um, but even that, though, you know, the younger generation, you know, I don't no. personally believe in crystals, but the younger generation, the Gen Z's and younger, actually, that's exactly the sort of stuff they're talking about. So you need to create an opening yeah. in a shop that they're going to go in. That's exactly what we need to be doing. And then yeah. you, next to it, you've got a traditional toffee shop. Yeah, you've got And then go. counterproductive toffee ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, good traditional toffee shop, that's exactly what we want. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's... Um, makes well, sense, okay. We just, literally just walk the length, and this is the art, like... There's two here now, the, the, the only unoccupied unit. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's really incredible, actually. Again, a, a lot of places have moved. I mean, a lot of these jewellers yeah. have moved from the galleries across yeah, into here. Tony Toff Guy, I think, has moved. Yeah, yeah Tony yeah. Guy's has moved. Toffee Roms has moved as well. Well, well, what does it tell you, though, that the resilience of that they've been able to move? Yeah. Do you know, they've, they've still got the customer base. They've still been able to keep people coming back to them. Now, do you remember what was at the bottom here? The Thornton's walk, Thornton's used to be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the walkway to the bus station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no more. Oh, no, God. This was all blocked off here. Yeah. Um, this was all blocked off here when they were doing the demolition. Yeah. Oh, so, there you go. Oh, they are building a covered walkway. I thought oh, they would. Yeah. Well, so we get to the bottom here now, and then what? Oh, we can walk around through this. Through this little narrow yeah, walkway. Little metal fence walkway. That's a little yeah. bit like downtown Beirut. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, let's put yeah. it back. But no, it's. Um... Well, demolition is never pretty. No, no, it's not. no, no, no. That's true. No. But, so, yeah, the, I mean, my argument all along has been, you know, more so nowadays because everyone's so environmentally conscious yeah. and all that kind of thing that, okay, maybe some of this needed to be knocked down. Like I've said before, this would be a really nice square if it goes, yeah. you know, here, it goes they, they all the way down, stream. down there. Yeah, they used to be a, a, yeah. a giant the sandbox tree. here yeah. as well, didn't they? Used yeah, to be they've had, yeah. yeah. Summer, yeah. 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 And they, they do. always had something here. Yeah. And tennis, they had a little tennis court for the yeah, kids and all that did, kind yeah. of thing yeah, yeah. as well, yeah. 
Um, lots of little stuff for them to uh, to do. But yeah, I mean, it could have been repurposed, knock some of it down, yeah, um, open it up a little bit. Um, and you know, my other idea was to put a Wigan Casino Museum. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Basically, rebuild Wigan Casino down that end behind B and M's. Just to jump in here, Tony, there's there's a, a guy and his son there who have just got to the bottom of Makington's Arcade where we've been. I have physically just watched them stand at the bottom. Obviously, you, if you if your eyesight isn't great or you can't tell what that is, they had no idea. They've literally U turned and walked yeah. all the way back. Right. And where is a sign? Even if you get to there, telling you that the walkway is open, so yeah. you can at least why isn't there a plastic sign or some sort even printed off yeah. on A4 telling you that this walkway uh, is open? We've got all these here, but they're pointing the wrong they're direction. The wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> pointing, pointing at Pound Baker, it's a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, the 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 arcade, um, not the arcade, the museum I was on about. Yeah. You know, you could build a recreation of uh, of, of, could, of it. The casino throwbacks. And, and yeah. it could be a wedding venue. It could be a museum for kids. Yeah. If they ever get Wigan Pier, because we're talking about stuff earlier on that's never really got finished. No. Well, look at Wigan Pier. How long has that been under development oh, for now? That's, that was still when I still lived up here, yeah. And how long <laughs> have you been gone? Six, it's about five, six years now. Right, and it's still yeah, not it's done. Still, it's still not done. I mean, people have now moved into the houses. Yeah. Um, and the guy who's running it said that with the money, built to finish it all off before the end of the year, but nothing's happened no. yet. Uh, I know we're only in March and still have well, yeah. to go. But I mean, if that does open, and we do have a bit of a museum there for you know the old times. Yeah, good, know. and yeah. so we should, we should then, be having that. Yeah, then you've got the kids go in there in the morning, yeah. Yeah. or in the afternoon, depending, and then come to the, the town centre, and they could have a meal in the Wigan Casino Museum, yeah. and they could relive the seventies, do a bit of dancing yeah. or yeah. whatever, and There's you know also that kind of one stuff. thing that uh, I think Wigan's needed for a while is like, like you say, like a, like a multi-purpose venue. Yeah. You know, for people yeah, to have yeah. weddings, you know, you could have like conferences here, and you know, you could actually branch out and do something with the with the space. But that's the point, though, Peter. That's exactly what Wigan Pier is apparently supposed to be. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if we're gonna. I don't know. You better tell me if we're gonna walk to Wigan Pier, Tony, to have a look at it. But the, the, there's the, not much point because there's nothing, nothing there. there. Exactly. Yeah. But also, if I'm in the town centre, if I'm any of these people who who are, who are walking past us now, how are they getting to Wigan Pier? Yeah. Are they getting a bus? Which yeah. bus? Where? Where? How are you getting there? If I if I have a walking stick, because I'm a not mobile, how am I travelling to Wigan Pier mm. to do any of this stuff? Yeah. No, no, it's... There's a lot of stuff that needs um, tweaking. And I'm, I'm getting to the stage now where, you know, we're, we're resigned to the fact that this is all coming down. Yeah. What we need to be concerned ourselves with is the fact that something gets there in its place. Yeah. It's I hope it has, to, it has to, it has to, you need that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good point. It's like, at some point you kind of have to accept that this is happening, but you just hope that what's coming next has been thought through yeah. properly because yeah. like we say, it's a lot of money that they're spending on this and you know, if it doesn't work, they're kind of done for really. Well, I, I went to do one of just my this travel videos and I went to, to a place, I can't remember what it's called now, it was Letchworth or something like that. It's down south anyway. and. Um, there was these boards up with this, with a sign on, and I didn't really pay much attention to it because it was a few years ago. And um, I, I walked around the town, and I noticed these boards at the other side of the town as well. So I figured out that you know there was something in the middle that they'd obviously knocked down, um, and they were obviously going to build something else. So out of interest, when all this started happening, I went back there, and um, <laughs> it was exactly the same. The only difference was the sign, which I didn't film properly, but I could see in the distance when I was filming had a little picture on it, obviously, what they were going to build. Mm. That had gone, um, and the border was still there. And I've been back again since, and it's exactly the same. Yeah. I went to Crewe, yeah. and there was, a bit like we were, all boarded up, row of uh, shops. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, look at the state of this, blah, 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 blah. Again, before any of this was happening in Wigan. Um, I went back again a while later, and they'd all been knocked down. Yeah. And then I went back again, and it was still just levelled ground. Now, I intend to go back again this week, to, to both these places to see if anything's developed. Yeah. But we've also got Nottingham as well. There's a shopping centre in Nottingham, which was partly knocked down. And um, what they did was, uh, it was Into who were doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And okay. they went bust, obviously. Yeah, they did a great yeah, job yeah. with the Trafford Centre. I was going to say, yeah. they yeah. did the Trafford Centre, didn't they? Yeah, um, so they went bust, and the demolition is pretty much what we see here. Yeah. Um, so what the council come up with was take the floors out in between, because we can't afford to do anything else, and then put big nets in and we can have it as an adult play centre. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Really? Yeah. You know, I mean, are councils that desperate to... Well, I think you, you bring up a really interesting point there about these construction companies going bust and then the, the council's kind of left holding the bag yeah. and with a half-developed area. Mm. I, th I really hope that, you know, construction is a very volatile industry yeah. at the moment. If, Like I said, if, these, if whoever's doing this, you know, they suddenly go under, is there a plan B? <laughs> is there a backup? Where's yeah. the cladding going? So we've seen all the cladding being stripped off here. What are they doing with the cladding? The cladding, you mean the um, the tiles? Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently the tiles have been resold if they're in resellable condition. Um, Can you get them off and get yeah. them into resellable yeah. well, condition? I actually, I actually filled them on it for a Wigan watch uh, last week, I think. Um, they had a, a cherry picker up there and they were putting some of the tiles on the cherry picker where they were right. and then all the tiles that are broke they were just chucking them down to the ground because obviously obviously right so yeah i mean that is a little bit that's uh, being saved yeah. yeah right so we're on the bottom end now of uh, market street we've just walked past the uh, main demolition site the bottom of makerson's arcade and uh, this part of town has always been i won't say necessarily run down it is run down now but it's, it's always, always been quite down. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Neglected is probably the better way. Yeah, it's yeah. always been like this. There's, there's never been anything to really draw you down here. Unless you're walking down to like uh, to Wigan Tech or whatever. There's never been a reason to wander down this road. No. <laughs> people forget as well just how big Wigan Town Centre actually is. Yeah. You know, if you where we've started off, we're now at the direct opposite other end and, of the, the yeah. town centre. And actually, you know, if you're not fully mobile, we're, we're fortunate we're all, we're, we're all fit-ish. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and we're walking, but actually a lot of people who might not have that been built, which is a lot of older Wigan yeah. residents, actually they're going to struggle to even make it down here. And what have they got to come down here for? We've got pie shop, pie shop, yeah, <laughs> and uh, we missed another pie shop up there. Yeah. So uh, there's nothing. We're well, living stereotype. Yeah, I know. I have to admit. Yeah. yeah. Well, like like we said, there's no, there's never really been a reason to come down here. There's never really been something to draw you down. And it's really struck me that, the, like you say, that no one's ever thought about maybe having like a, a decent set of restaurants or a couple yeah. of bars or pubs yeah, yeah. down here. Do you know, just to pull it out of the town centre and kind of expand into different bits of it. Yeah, I mean, this this was a. Uh, this is Kay's Arcade. This is where the old Heron used to be. Oh, right. Um, okay, I don't think I've ever been down here. <laughs> well, you ought to. And the, uh, what, what uh, Kay's, Mr. Kay's done is yeah. he's built um, like a, a nice little arcade, which is really good, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and well laid out and, and all that kind of thing. And it's small units. But the problem it has, and this is a problem I said when I first heard about it, was where it is, and where it is, is basically at the bottom end of the bus station, and people who go into the town centre go up the bus station, yeah. or out where the news agents is, um, so any businesses that are in here are going to struggle to get people here. Yeah, I, like I said, I didn't even know this was here. I mean, there was a, we're looking at a coffee shop, we've passed two coffee shops and the yeah. rest are vacant, there's not a single customer, I'm going to go out on a limb and say these people have not had any custom today, unfortunately, I feel like... Well, that one's for... Uh, oh, that one's for... Overlet, right, yeah. so they've not had customs today. Yeah. But the point is, actually, Tony, until you'd taken us down there, I've never, ever walked through that. No. I didn't even know that, unfortunately. And actually, you know, stuff like that should be championed. It's yeah. ideal small units for exactly what we said earlier. Yeah. That smaller businesses could yeah. have had a go at being a business. If you yeah. always wanted to have that ambition but couldn't afford it, this is the place to go, to go, literally. But what what Peter said and what you said, Tony, how did we get here? Why would they come here? Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. I mean, I when I first moved to Wigan Town Centre, I started off in Pemberton, and I moved yeah. to Wigan Town Centre, and I was further up Market Street, at the yeah. old um, Army Navy store yeah. I was in. I remember, yeah, big store, huge Yeah, yeah, unit. it was huge. And uh, I thought, oh, you know, I, I had nothing to fill it when I moved in and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, well, let me in Wigan Town Centre, it'd be great. No, I mean, I literally, genuinely got that stress, ended up on a motorway bridge at three o'clock in the morning because it just got too much. Yeah. And that's when I found out about location, location, location. Yeah. And you might be in Wigan Town Centre, but you're not in the right place. Yeah. This gets built, and I'm like, you spent a lot of money on here, Mr. K, uh, for Kay's Arcade, and it's fantastic, it's well done, yeah, it's a it's good really idea. it's a really nice little arcade, actually. It's but, great. But, but it's in the wrong place. It's, you need to pick it up and move it. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder, inside the bus station, is there anything to tell you that that's here? No. That's no, ridiculous. But, you know. There's I nothing mean, in the bus station to tell you that Wigan's here. No. You know, I mean, there's no... There's no map of Wigan. I might just be changing every five minutes at the moment. Yeah, yeah it'd have um, to be a virtual map. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, a prime example is here. So we've got a list of shops of what's in what's in Kay's Arcade. What was in Kay's Arcade? Sorry, oh, that's the point. What was in Kay's Arcade? We've got now, I imagine, all these units to rent, and I don't know how many of these are obviously have, have gone yeah. now. 
But how, how do we how do we fill this and why? Do you get off the bus and then, like Peter's just said, is there something in... I don't know what is inside yeah. this terminal Well, here. It, it's, Saturday, it's Saturday dinner time and we've been studying for, what, three or four minutes? Yes. Yeah. And how many people come out of the bus station at the bottom? None. So, you know, that is the problem. It's... Peak shopping day. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, a peak shopping day and there's no one down this end of town because there's no reason to come down here unless you're going to the market um, you know you come down the bottom ends and come out but yeah no one comes out here I don't come out this end of the no. bottom you know, I didn't uh, even know this new thing was here <laughs> well the new bus station <laughs> yeah oh, <right. laughs> it was last time like I said last time I was here that none of this was here well I did I did a video of uh, I did a spoof news uh, of when they were building the Wigan yeah, bus station yeah. and uh, I had John in the studio and John uh, out here <laughs> and we even uh, one of the Johns can't remember when it was now turned up at 8 o'clock in the morning for the opening. Um, the watched, opening of the bus station? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was my invite, but I, why wasn't I asked to Chief Ribbon cut yeah, your wig over here. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Literally an envelope opening I wasn't I invited to. And then the other John turned up at 8 o'clock at night. I bet he... got he... his timing wrong. Oh, Idiot. God. Idiot. Jeez. Yeah, this is impressive. Impressive. It's actually quite nice in here. I will, I will say, like I said, I've not been... Not been down this way. Yeah. The last time I was here was in all the individual sheds along the along the um, along the route there. But um, no, I will say this is actually rather swish. <laughs> it is. I've I've done a lot of travelling on buses recently for uh, the vlog I do. Instead of going to towns and cities and slagging them off, I get on a bus and slag off the bus ride instead. <laughs> but. Um, all, a lot of bus stations have had a lot of money spent on them. You go to Bolton, they've got a pretty new bus station as well. Bury, when I was a kid, that was new. I've been to it since, and they've not done a lot to it, but it still looks quite smart. Whereas yeah. the old bus station here was the dull, um, you know, yeah, smart glass. And, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was a bit, it needed something doing to it. Which is, which is great to have a really fancy, brand new, clean, safe bus station. But not if anybody's never coming to Wigan. Yeah, and what I was going to ask is, whilst it's nice investing in the stations, are they doing to invest anything in the routes? Are there more buses on the streets? Are they actually so you can use them? Where's the use stops? All the facilities? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's all about having nice facilities if no one's here to use yeah, them. Exactly. One thing I've noticed with the travelling on the buses because I've not really travelled on a bus since I was a kid. I've, I've not. Um, but there's five pounds. You know, it's a bit of fun. Yeah. Spend the day out. But. Yeah, they're not regular. Uh, I mean, the buses where I live, uh, up uh, Kit Green, we used to have the three and four, and they were every 10 minutes. Now they're every 15 minutes. To be fair, they could probably be every 20 minutes. It yeah. wouldn't make that much difference. But they seem to have done that everywhere. And there's a lot of buses that are every hour. Yeah. And if you miss it, you're stuck in somewhere for an hour. And that's where the time goes on. It takes me, you know, two hours to get to Manchester on a bus. It's crazy, yeah. Um, but it all costs a fiver. So you, you, you know, you've got to balance it, it out. You know, you balance it out. I obviously been like living up Wigan, uh, living Oral Way. Uh, just today on a Saturday, it's the bus is every half an hour to get into to get into Wigan. So Oral. if you miss it, you'll have a stood at a bus stop yeah. in Oral for thirty minutes yeah. extra, or you're having to ask. And, and then, I, and then to get there's no train, there's no trains on a Sunday no, from no, no, Oral no, Station no. into into Wigan. And I imagine the bus times are less on a Sunday. Not even less on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, even then once you come into Wigan Town Centre on a Sunday, if it's not yeah. for going getting a pint. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Like, no, yeah. you know, you're going to go to the cinema. Yeah, so yes, yeah, the Bowling Alley, the yeah. cinema, yeah, come the Ramblers Play Centre, the hotel. I'm staying over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we're now at Jackson's Court, uh, the top of the bus station, um, the home of uh, the Tap and Barrel. Yeah. If I remember rightly. It used to be one of my favourites, the Tap and Barrel. Oh, I see at one point, yeah, it's just up here. Yeah. Still here. Yeah, it's still going. Maybe we'll, maybe we have a little pit stop. Yeah. <laughs> It's not even dinner time yet. Yeah, but um, it's 12 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I think it's 12 o'clock here, actually. It literally is. That's the bell that's <laughs> yeah. still there swinging. Yeah. But uh, it's nice to see these kind of places doing quite well, actually, because, like you say, they're off the beaten track a little bit. But, you know, they've still got... Um, they still seem quite busy, you know. They're still surviving. And, and let's, just, let's be honest, hospitality has always struggled as an industry. But, yeah. yeah, it seems to be doing all right, actually. But this is exactly the sort of thing that we discussed on, on this episode of Wigan Watch, yeah. is about creating a niche, a need for somebody yeah. to come to you. And actually, this could be a really nice, you've got your micro breweries, your micro pubs, little eateries. This would be, Jackson's Court has always been ideal for yeah. this. We just need, we need more of it. We need people yeah. to come here. We need people to understand, you know, if I'm stood at the other side of Jackson's Court, do I know what's in here? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's been a, a lot of um, businesses start off here. And some have done very well. I mean, the, the courtyard grill here, um, breakfast and grill. Yeah. Fabulous food. Absolutely amazing. Um, the guy who owned it has sold it recently. All oh, right. Um, but I've not heard any bad news about it. No. You know, one of them good things. And I'm pretty sure one of these units here was uh, originally a Funko Figures. 
well it wasn't called that at the time yeah. um, but that was you know where Paul started yeah, out yeah, so yeah it's, it's a good place to learn things I mean I did it in Pemberton um, I was there for four years just to cut my teeth I'd never actually owned a business before didn't know what I was doing so I thought well rather than going to Living Town Centre and you know all millions mm. I'll go there and all thousands instead yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I learned to cut my teeth in it, and that's what we need in Wigan. Yeah. And did that work? It worked for me because I, it, I didn't make any money, but I knew what, what I was doing, doing yeah. right yeah, and what yeah. I was so doing ready wrong. ready to move. Yeah. yeah. And then when I moved to Wigan, I was ready to go, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, third time um, lucky. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah, third time. Third time, time Wigan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, second time was pretty good in Wigan yeah. Centre, to be yeah. honest. But, yeah, Jackson's Court is definitely, you know, you could make more like this. If you could even make... Um, you know, we were talking about uh, Marks and Spencers and Debenhams earlier. Yeah. You can make it to something similar to this. Yeah. That would be great. You know, you could have all these little boutique shops and, yeah. you know, like the sash house here we've got, which is uh, hairdressers and all that. You've got all this stuff going on um, that people don't know about. No. But if it was in the town centre, it'd be fabulous. Yeah. And it uses buildings that you can't necessarily fill with one, yeah. with one one trader you can't have a massive shop here anyway but the point is we're fortunate that we've got this in, in Wigan Town Centre but are people coming to it yeah. I, 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 don't, we, we, I don't know we've not seen that many people well, to be fair I think it's been a little bit busier than I was expecting it to yeah. be. which is a good thing but yeah. also it's sad that you're surprised so by that surprised yeah. by it. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the point yeah. isn't it this doesn't help no no but I mean this just yeah. proves that they're keeping the building maintained yeah I mean it's not getting knocked down that's the main thing yeah. <laughs> What a low bar. <laughs> well, I think yeah. we're on a whole gate now, as you can see, because yeah. we've got whole gate beds. And um, <laughs> remember, this is Saturday at noon. Yeah, literally. Literally noon. And this is what worries me about Wigan Town Centre. This is, this is what I always say about location, location, location. You know, I, I did look at moving here, but having been around the corner and it was dead there, I thought it's going to be even quieter here. Yeah. Okay, the rents are a little bit more realistic, but we see quite a few little businesses open and shut. I mean, well, I think most recently there was a candy shop, an American candy shop open down there, and, you know, it was quite a smart-looking place and all that. Lasted about six months. Yeah. Gone. Because... Because there's no, no traffic, there. there's no, no. footfall. No footfall. Why no. is there a reason for somebody to come down here? You know, if they come to Jackson's Court, they might enter Jackson's Court this way, potentially, but they're not going to come back out this way, so... No. It's, it's just a shame. Yeah. It's just a shame, but town centres that seem to do better seem to have some kind of circle on them. Yeah. And what Wigan's got, it's like, a, well, like my hand. You've got all these little streets going off. You've got, like, um, Standish Gate at the bottom. You've got Main Street. You've got Market Street that we've just been on. You've got Hallgate, where we are now. And then you've got Wallgate going down to the railway station. But they don't lead anywhere. They're all dead ends. Yeah. So you've got to walk down them and then you've got to turn around and walk back up again. And we have physically seen that on this Wigan watch. Yeah. We've watched people literally get to a dead end and you turned. Yeah, yeah. And you only do it once though. Yeah. <laughs> right, we are now on in Market Place. And again, you can see the uh, boards going up there for the Market Gate partial demolition. So guys, what are you thinking? I'm thinking we are now, it's Saturday, prime day, and you can even feel how quiet it is. There's yeah. more yeah. pigeons on the floor than there are people walking yeah. around. I think you're right there. And the worst <laughs> bit here is, and, and Tony, you'll have to come over here, I'm sorry, but is somebody, do we need a regular cleaning of these benches? Because if I am not mobile, we've talked a lot about this, accessibility, or I just needed to sit down, how am I sitting in pigeon I'm not crap? Sitting that. You're not, you know, <laughs> I'm not sitting on that. And don't forget, Peter lives in London, so he is used to, you know, not clean areas. That's true. But this is a disgrace. It's a disgrace, and it's continuously be like this. This is a nice little circle that we're in yeah. here, but I'm looking at all these benches, and by the one that that gentleman sat on, we've got a pigeon problem. Yeah. You know what they do in Westminster, obviously, they bring the guy with the hawk in, yeah, obviously, but yeah. we can follow it, right? I'm not being funny, but there must be a way of attaching a siren or yeah. something to get rid to of get all rid these. Of this is a serious actual problem. Yeah, and yeah. also, what gets me is, this is, like you say, a nice little, like, little area. Yeah. Why isn't there, like, a band on? Yeah. You know, there's, Wigan's got a thriving music scene. You know, you could have, like, every Saturday afternoon, have a different band yeah, on Yeah, like something. a guest house, yeah. Like, yeah. Instead, like, you know, it's just Pigeon it, Central yeah. that we're going to be attached. Actually using it, because I think that was the purpose where it was built for, isn't it? Like you can have some kind of yeah. like live and the light switch on yeah, and other no, events are obviously stuff. held here outside the moon. Yeah. And, uh, the problem you have is though, it's too small. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the control. And, and the the thing that worries me, and I know a lot of the retailers uh, have said, you know, when there's a big celebration on up here, mm. mainly like winning the cup or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
the crowds go all the way down and they block all the entrances to all the shops. Yeah, of course they do. So, you know, what would be better would be this big square I was on about, um, instead of the hotel and the, um, uh, what was it, the food yeah. hub thing. Yeah. Um, just have a bigger square so we could do stuff yeah. like yeah. that and then you could leave this for the pigeons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. great. Well, that yeah. says it all, leave uh, it yeah, for the leave pigeons. I don't forget the underground toilets here that have just been capped, they're still there. Really? Yes, yeah, there's uh, two underground toilets, <laughs> one on this side, one on that all side. Right. They're probably in a better state than these benches. benches probably. <laughs> well, they are because no one can get to them. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we are with the most famous celebrity from Wigan, uh, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> And we've also got George Farnby as well, who's decided to join us. I don't know what George would make of what's going on in Wigan at the moment, but to be fair, he didn't see the galleries get built, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, he probably wouldn't I like that either. But yeah, we're in the Grand Arcade. This is the main shopping centre. Um, we've got a live violinist behind you. Good, this is good. what, what we want this on a Saturday afternoon. We want yeah. to be here in that sort of stuff. I a have, bit of atmosphere. I have to admit, it is busier in here than I thought it would be. There's a lot, a lot of the units are still going. Um, I sad to see Marks and Spencer's, obviously, that's gone at the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, well, yeah, I think most of them actually, I know there's one or two down there, but they seem to all be, to be going, which well, is nice. Well, we've been talking to the, uh, the manager uh, of the centre, uh, and he's confident that the couple of units that are empty will be filled soon. Yeah, well, so that's, that's really good news. This is a success story uh, to a degree uh, yeah. of what's going on. To a degree, because there is a lot of questions, I still think, about the purpose and the need for the Grand Arcade in Wigan. And obviously, yeah. it's here. We're not going to demolish the Grand Arcade, I don't think. Not yet. Uh, not give, yet. It, give it another 20 years. Give it another 20 years, yeah. years and yeah. say it's not fit for purpose. But the point here is, what are those shops going to be? Because we've seen dilution in the Grand Arcade. We've seen it have, you know, much more higher calibre shops. And now we're seeing, you know, your pet coach, your pound lads. But actually, you know, maybe that is the, maybe it's yeah. in the need. We've talked a lot about that in this Wigan Watch. Yeah, I mean, the the, the, the the problem you've had with the a lot of the shops, like British Home Stores and uh, Top Man and all that kind of stuff, is, you know, it was a national thing that went yeah, bust. Yeah, it got yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There wasn't anything wrong with the individual high. stores here, right. it was a national yeah. trend. Yeah. So you, what you need to do is fill them up with stuff, and if they're independent businesses, I mean, there's one further around the yeah. corner that's very similar to uh, Funko Figures. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's nice to see that they're giving a chance to independent yeah. retailers. So they need to. Uh, uh, but, that's, but that's to fill it up. And yeah. have to. And, but again, the, the thing with the Grand Arcade for me is, it's a dead end. You walk down it to yeah. where the Devons yeah. was, well, and then you've got to walk back, back again. again. Let's yeah. find out. You know, it's yeah. a spider's web, so yeah, let's go for a walk. <laughs> what have you seen? What have you seen? Well, uh, an artist yeah. live in HMV today uh, at 2pm. This is exactly the type of stuff that we need to bring people into the Grand Arcade, to maybe bring people out of town who've never been to no. Wigan before, but are followers of this artist and coming into the Grand Arcade, coming into Wigan, experiencing it for the first time, I just genuinely hope they have a good enough experience to come back without yeah. the need for seeing but, the yeah. favourite artist. Because yeah. that's what we need. That, that is, we need new people to come to Wigan. Yeah. We also like you said, regularly as well. So it's no point just going yeah. on a one-off yeah, visit yeah, yeah, yeah. and then never returning. Yeah, again. exactly. Because you need to show people that there's actually something worth coming for, so you can, you come back and back and back. And, then, and that's how you, you, the town can revitalise itself, not just, on a one, not just having one really good day. Because one really good day means nothing yeah, in, the in the Grand Arcade. Yeah. Totally, yeah. In the Grand Arcade. The yeah, in the Grand Arcade. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> um, they did have the uh, Lathams, Lathams. The Lathams, yeah. Here, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing a, a sign-in as well recently. Oh, so. right. Some of Wigan's greatest exports now, though. Yeah. Look what those guys are doing. They're exactly what we need Wigan is to be doing. I talked about this in my uh, Wigan post column a few weeks ago. We need to, you know, people like Peter, obviously, a, a, a Wigan are doing good for himself in the capital on, on, obviously, multiple national news channels. We need that. We need to see champions of the Wigan. The ones you've not heard of. That's the <laughs> You can name them. Uh, and um, that's the point. We need, we need more of that. We want, we want Wiganers like to see Wiganers do well. Yeah, so let's true. carry that trend on. I did want to interview the the Lathams, but uh, yeah, it was all a bit late. So. Well, yeah, yeah. But, he's uh, straining on, he's got yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that as well. It's an Uber fan. But yeah, we're down at the uh, bottom end now of uh, the Grand Arcade. So you've still got shops like The Works, uh, Dykeman's, River Island's still here. You've got New Look on the other side. Um, we've got a new Claire's that's just opened, again relocated from, from the, galleries. the galleries, yeah. Uh, and then next to that, we've got Savers, which has relocated from the galleries as well. Tony, you'll, you'll probably know the answer to this. Were, were people uh, like given like incentives to move from the galleries into other spots in Wigan? I, did, was there no. kind of any kind of schemes or you know? Not that I'm place? aware of. I spoke to a lot of retailers um, 
at the time when yeah. we were all getting kicked out. We got the eviction letters and everything. And um, none of them, as far as they, well, as far as the managers knew, yeah. um, had had any help any offered help. whatsoever. Yeah. That's, see, that's, that's crazy for and me. Like, just, a lot know. of the sole traders like myself definitely had no help no. whatsoever. God, which they, is they why I'm still waiting. <laughs> which is why I'm still waiting to move into somewhere yeah. because you how know, long has that been now? We were shut in March last year. Yeah. Wow! So, so you're looking uh, uh, twelve months off. Twelve months of not doing anything. Yeah. Twelve months yeah. of no income. 12 yeah, pretty months, much. Twelve yeah. months of. I mean, you know what? And you've been left in the total wilderness, Tommy. And I think actually that is deeply disturbing. As somebody who was a loyal Wiganer, spends all his life in Wigan, all his time in Wigan, has has actively. I've only lived here thirty years. Uh, has, <laughs> a, has actively been passionate about Wigan and, and has, has brought businesses into Wigan. Has been left into the wasteland. Yeah. I think it's awful. Yeah. I think it's really very. And this is the the old Debenhams, which is. Uh, Currently not doing anything. It looks prettier. They don't, I mean, at least it looks prettier than, yeah, you know. That's, that's, at least they've masked the fact that that is a giant empty space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the rumours that we've heard about what's going on in there, I've not heard anything for definite, but uh, again, splittage seems to be yeah. the way forward. It has to be. It's and, too big of a space. They, and, and I it's, always thought, like, you know, you need those big department stores to, to occupy as, as a space that big, but those department stores can't survive nationally. So, no. unfortunately, with towns like Wigan often get the... Uh, the brunt end of the deal when it comes to when those kind of uh, companies go bust. But yeah, let's see. And we've got the old Wigan Warrior shop as well, which someone's yeah. moving into very, very soon indeed. All right. Um, but I don't know who it is. Um, but we'll find out soon enough. It'll be revealed on Wigan Watch. <laughs> right then, we are now here to end this uh, bumper um, <laughs> Wigan Watch uh, with uh, my two associates for the day. And uh, what are your closing thoughts? Well, like I said, it's, it's been a good couple of years since I've been able to have a wander around the town centre and I just feel like there's so much potential here and it, I just feel like it's being squandered. There's lots of really nice plans and big visions for stuff, but there's so much help people need right now in the, like not just necessarily business, but also people as well. And I just can't help but feel like if this all collapses, and I really hope it doesn't, I'm just wondering who's going to be left holding the bag? And I, I get the feeling it's going to be the people of Wigan, but... Um, yeah, this it just feels like this right on the cusp of something that could be really good for the town, and I just hope they don't squander it. Hmm. I, I think it's fitting uh, that we're ending this episode of Wigan Watch actually at the uh, face of Wigan, because I actually know do believe we're coming to a, a crisis point in Wigan and, and you know I've spoken to Wiganers like for example my dad who's lived in Wigan all his life a, a, a deeply passionate Wiganer like yourself Tony and we're at the point now we're, we're, we're at a total inflection point in Wigan this is make or break we need a facelift as a town and <laughs> Is that happening? We, we've shown on this episode of Wigan Watch that it is happening, but like Peter said, I genuinely don't believe that this direction is going to result in the, the resurgence of Wigan that they think it's going to be. I pray it does. You know, I, I'm a, a truly passionate yeah. Wiganer. I live in the area. I absolutely love Wigan, but my heart is breaking over what's happening in our town, and fingers crossed this works, because honestly, if it doesn't, somebody's got to pay. Yeah, um, but will they? That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the things that a lot of people have said, uh, I stood as a, an in independent councillor at the last election, last May, and uh, people said, oh, you know, you'll get nothing, blah, 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 everyone votes Labour and all that. And yeah, I did lose to Labour, but only by a couple of hundred votes. Um, and it wasn't bad for a first-timer. Yeah, yeah. No. So, but that's the problem. You know, people say it for Wigan, uh, and it I think the change. council... No, I'm, I'm not about the council and everything. Labour controlled. But people in Wigan seem to vote for them every time. It's like, you know, grandma and granddad voted for Labour, oh, so yeah, I'm voting yeah, for yeah. Labour. Yeah, yeah. But things have changed. Even Labour's changing. I don't think Labour nationally is going to do a better job in government than what the Tories are no, doing. No, and it's one thing I notice every time I do come back to visit family and friends and everything, the one thing I do notice that people are always saying is they're starting to demand more. That they're not putting up with, you yeah. know, oh, this is the way it kind of is. They're starting yeah. to demand answers. They want Good. to know why things are yeah. the way they are. And I think yeah. it's a great thing to see, actually. We need that. People should start demanding answers from the local representatives. And if they don't like what the local representatives are doing or offering, don't keep moaning about it online. Action, change. The local elections are coming up. Make the change. Because if not, we're going to keep getting the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, like the Tories have messed up massively nationally recently because, you know, they thought they were untouchable. 
and uh, I think you get a lot of that from uh, local councils, not just Wigan Council, I dare say there are other councils, yeah, yeah. you know, the Lib Dems as well as Conservatives and other Labour councils who just get voted in all the time and think they can do whatever they want. And I think, Complacency. Yeah, yeah, I think those. I think it get, they get lazy Yeah. and they and just I think, think... We said this earlier on, it's a lack of accountability as well. If you know there's no consequence to your actions, you can basically do whatever you want. And you know, you know you're either going to keep yeah. being voted in or you're not going to lose your job in any meaningful yeah. way. It, you know, there's no kind of like I've got to get this right this has to be the right thing to do oh we'll just you know we'll, we'll just uh, turn on the money tap again and you know we'll put up yeah. council tax you know there's no real consequence anymore and, uh, and it's nice to see things starting to slowly change yeah. but I think change might be a long time before we see something of significance anyway yeah I agree I agree anyway Anything else, Luke? That's it. I actually think I just, as, as Peter said, as you've said, Tony, I truly believe that we are a, a inflection point for Wigan and I, I truly, genuinely pray that this, uh, this changes because if it does not, this town is going to sink and we need to stop that before it happens and genuinely people need to be using the voice and speak up more. You know, as Peter's saying, Wiganers are angry. Use that anger, funnel it into positive means by voting yeah. for change in the local elections or actually even you know watching more things like that Tony's doing you know what you're doing Tony you're not getting enough credit here but actually you're showing people who can't maybe make it into the town centre or live, or live out of town like, like Peter does you're showing them it's vital that you continue this work God bless Wigan Watch <laughs> Oh, I'm going to... He's welling up. Drinks are on him Drinks are on him now. So, yeah, that's it for this uh, Wigan Watch. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and check out the playlist as well. Big thanks to uh, Peter and Luke for joining me. Uh, so it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wigan. Wigan, Wigan Watch. 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 Wigan 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 Watch Wigan Watch Wigan Watch Wigan Watch Wigan Watch It's nice to see something being built uh, in Wigan and this is near the Empire Cinema and this is going to be the uh, Taco Bell and as you can see they've already got the foundations cut out ready to go Are you as excited as I am? <laughs>